So much was riding on this year, 100th anniversary of the birth of the Negro Leagues formed right here in Kansas City. And we had been game planning for this for over a year. We felt like we had a solid game plan in place. And now it's execution time. And so there was going to be not only this year-long celebration, but it was also going to launch a significant fundraising campaign. You know, with the captured attention of the 100th anniversary, we felt like this would be the perfect springboard to launch a significant fundraising campaign because the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum is 30 years old. But when we started this museum 30 years ago, we started in a little one-room office and as we're so fond of saying, most museums start with an endowment already in place. We started with a hope and a prayer. And, and so, but we also had a diligent group who believed that this history was significant and that it deserved to stand the test of time. And we've been able to navigate the economic landscape for some 30 years, help revitalize historic 18th and Vine along that journey. But this was going to be that opportunity that set the museum up to operate into perpetuity. And so when we gathered at the Paseo YMCA, right around the corner from where we're sitting right now, and of course that's where the Negro Leagues were formed in 1920 by Andrew Rube Foster. And so he led a contingent of eight independent black baseball team owners into the Paseo YMCA. And of course out of that meeting came the birth of the Negro National League. So what do we do? We lead this distinguished group of community civic business leaders back into that very same building. So we go back into that building on February 13th of this year, 100 years, the exact date that Root Foster formed these leagues, and we've got the commissioner of Major League Baseball, Rob Manfred, with us. We've got Xavier James, who's the chief operating officer of Major League Baseball's Players Association with us. The Honorable Quentin Lucas, mayor of the great city of Kansas City is there. Eight time Gold Glove winner, Royals Hall of Famer, and now Jackson County Executive Frank White is there with us. The Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Missouri, Mike Kehoe is also there, and the new owner of our Kansas City Royals, John Sherman. So we've got an all-star delegation of business and civic leaders there. The room is just filled with electricity and you could feel the spirit of Ruth Foster in that room as we announced our plans for this year long celebration. Major League Baseball and the Players Association announced a joint $1 million contribution to the museum. June 27th, we're gonna have this National Day of Recognition, an unprecedented show of solidarity between Major League Baseball and its players in tipping their cap to the Negro Leagues. So we're off and running. Man, 30 days later, everything comes to a screeching halt, just like that. So yeah, I'd be lying if I said it didn't knock the wind out of my sails, because it did, but as I've said on a number of occasions, if you're going to be a steward of this story, you can't wallow in self-pity. It would be doing a complete disservice to those who call the Negro Leagues home. And so we had to encompass the spirit of the Negro Leagues, that very resilient spirit of the Negro Leagues. So what do you do? You come out and you figure out a way when others say there is no way. And that's what we've been trying to do. Or as I oftentimes say, a bad baseball analogy, coronavirus was this big nasty right-hander who just threw one high and tight, knock you down, but now you got to get back in the batter's box dust yourself off and try to figure out how you're going to hit that sucker. And, and we've been trying to figure out how we're going to hit coronavirus all year, and we've been fortunate and blessed to have had some tremendous success.